Would you like to hear the ancient verse passed down in this region? Excellent. Without further ado. Pretty close. You don't see me, my kinswoman, wearing that style often. I bet it drives a vow out in the world wild. I'm at the perfect age to travel and see what the world holds myself, but I've barely explored this desert. Mm. Adventures won't come and find me, I know. I have to put myself out there. I like staying around the familiar, I guess. You, though. You should see the world, meet new people. Maybe you'll find a nice foe. The book, traveler. Back in front of Gerdo Town, the last thing I'd like to take care of in this video is uh, open up that tower. It's a little hard to see from this distance, but trust me, it's there. So, I would like to go over there and take care of stuff and things like that because we saw a glimpse of that tower and we can go and get it right now. It's gonna really bother me if we don't do that now, so yeah, let's go take care of that. And these seals are just so cute. I want a plushie of these things. <laughs> They're just so cute! <laughs> okay, so the easiest path for us to take to get over there is, even though we could go down that way and it might be the best uh, course of action in terms of best camera angles and things like that and all that fancy stuff involving filmmaking and all that cool stuff, we want to go over this way. That's basically what I'm trying to say. <laughs> there is plenty of stuff for us to do over there, and I mean a lot of stuff. Get back over here. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are, Sand Seal? Just because you hit your head on a rock does not mean you have to stop. <laughs> okay. I think it's this way we want to go for what I want to do. Yep, it is. I'm right. I'm always right. Unless I'm left. Or center. Or top left. Or sideways. So as we go over this way, I have a fun story about this area. So, Breath of the Wild is- Oh, that poor seal! Oh, it's dizzy now! I want to get a picture of this. <laughs> it's just so cute. Oh, you're so fluffy and adorable. I'm gonna plush you you so badly. So as we go across this area, I have a bit of a fun story. So, Breath of the Wild is the kind of game where you could be like me and research it daily for three for two and a half years and you're still gonna find new stuff about it. I found new stuff about this, let's play in this game. As I was practicing through this area, I was watching a trivia video that Digital Gaming made for this game. We were talking about a bunch of fun facts about this game. Most of it was stuff that I already knew about, such as the fact that they recreated um, Kyoto. Um, in the earlier builds of this game to get the sense of exploration and things like that. But one really interesting thing that I didn't know about, that I'm pretty sure has probably been coming out for a little while, just haven't come across it, is a glitch. So basically how this game handles the item inventory system, it's mo common across most games of the style, but the pictures that you'll see of like the weapons and things like that that tell you what weapon is going to be equipped and things like that there are a few leftover files from early in the game now it's common it's a common developer technique to create placeholder images that are not meant to be there in the final game they are very basic and simplistic just to give developers an idea of uh, what they want in the final game, or just in general, just have something there so that the idea is functioning without them having to make a fully finished thing yet. Um, that is going to bother me if I don't get rid of that. My goodness! Right here, bomb. Stay right there. There we go. I'm going to be distracted. So... One of these placeholder items is an ice cream cone. You'll see a picture of it on the corner of the screen right now, but there is actually a glitch that can make this show up in your inventory. I don't know how to trigger it. 
I don't honestly don't know much about this glitch other than the fact that it has something to do with I want to say the stealth elixirs or a speed elixir, one of those two. Um, there'll be a caption on screen, correct me if I'm wrong about any of this, but one of the elixir types shares the same traits as this place order glitch item. So people seem to think that that might help cause the glitch, um, but as far as I know, there's no current known way of triggering it intentionally. If one is found, I will gladly demonstrate it in the Let's Play. I don't know how to trigger it, uh, so I unfortunately can't demonstrate it for the videos, at least for now. But hopefully before the end of the Let's Play, we will be able to demonstrate that. And it's going to be a while before the Let's Play is of Owie! Well, it's certainly going to be a while now because we're dead. <laughs> that put us in a mean place, wow! Checkpoint, that was rude. <laughs> it put us next to the guy that killed us, next to the Octorok we were trying to blow up but failed miserably at, and next to a freaking Moblin. That's just rude. Alright, well, we'll continue onwards. Hopefully we'll be able to make it through here okay. If you have bomb arrows, they can definitely be helpful. Knocking down those boulders and things like that. Could be for me, could be for me. There we go. That's a second rock pile in this these past ten minutes that we have that we weren't able to destroy the first time. That's just rude. Hopefully they'll be able to stop following me because I don't like being followed unless they're following me on Twitter. What's up here? <laughs> Again with the easily distracted thing. Ah. Okay, that would be a good way to get to that tower, except it won't be high enough, and we definitely don't have enough stamina for that. Uh, so let's try a different method instead. We want to go up that tower instead. So what I like to do is I'm going to take this giant metallic block with me so that we can head over this way. Uh, this box is going to be our best friend forever. They are going to be the greatest of buddies with us. I'm going to invite them to all my tea parties and we're going to make cupcakes together and we're going to braid our hair even though that thing is a box and doesn't have hair. We'll make it a wig so that we can braid it. Is that a thing you can do? Can you braid a wig? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> okay, this is something they always mess up whenever I go through this area. I always jump off that before moving the box and you have to kind of wait on that one. So let's try that again. Hopefully this time without fail. Okay, there we go. And with that taken care of, now we can go over here, move the box out of the way, and we we made an elevator, and that's pretty cool. I always love experimenting with those things; they're always just so much fun. Now, it probably would have been faster to just climb the wall, but I've, in I've intentionally not been climbing walls that much throughout this series because. I think it's just more fun to demonstrate the way that you are likely intended to explore these areas. Even if it is an open game, there's still some structure and how you're, and how the developer is intended for players to go across these areas. Like we could have very easily just climbed all these walls over here and got up that way, but there is a clearly a path down there, so I wanted to do that, and that's gonna be pretty cool. Now this tower name. This is something that confused me so much when I was planning out this last play, um, because... Uh, well, we'll see when we get up there. Uh, well, actually, I can just stop by right now. So, that region over there, that's called the Wasteland region. And these mountains are the Gerudo region. Why are they backwards? <laughs> this area should be the Wasteland, and that should be the Gerudo region. The Gerudo town is over there! Why is that called the Wasteland region? That confused me so much when I was planning out this last play. Because every side quest that involved Gerdos or anything like that was always in the Wasteland region. And I was like, why is it in the Wasteland region? Why didn't they call this the Gerudo region? 
Anyway, we have a tower to activate. Just look at how much of the map we have opened. Uh, we've come a long way, but we have a long way to go. Yeah. What if... no. But then... Hmm? Hmm, ah, forgive me. I was lost in a song written by my late teacher. He wrote her for the hero who fell to the calamity a hundred years ago. So much time has passed, and yet the hero has not yet returned, but my teacher always kept faith. I hope to play the song for the hero someday, so I practice it often. Oh, forgive me. It seems I've prattled on. I know a song about this place. Would you like to hear the ancient verse passed down in this region? Excellent. Without further ado... I still don't quite understand the lyrics, but knowing my teacher, they're the key to revealing a secret. Best of luck, and may the light illuminate your path. Sign of a Shadow. This will be the final shrine quest uh, that we'll be taking care of in today's episode. So that's going to be pretty amusing indeed. Now, I know I mentioned this before at some point in a previous episode on the playlist, but... <laughs> it's like a super common phrase for Nintendo characters to say, may the blank 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 like it's kind of like a may the force be with you kind of saying but the Nintendo versions are usually like may the light illuminate your path or Rosalina the Galaxy games will be all like may the stars shine down on you it's just kind of an amusing thing that appears pretty often in these games so we've now made it daytime and the reason for that is because to complete this uh, shrine quest we'll need to wait until the shadow of the tower reaches this pedestal. So it's gonna be a little while before that happens, so... Task forward! Duh! Between 3 o'clock p.m. and 4 o'clock p.m., the shadow will start making its way across this cliff over here. So I'm gonna wait for it to be across the pedestal. And at this point, make sure you have a bow and arrow ready. And then, ready. Ah, the dragon over there. Ready, aim, fire! <laughs> Sign of the Shadow. Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> uh, when I was younger, Shadow the Hedgehog used to be my favorite Sonic character. Um, but nowadays it's Dr. Eggman. <laughs> He's just so funny in colors. You set for the shrine. I am Sasakai, in the name of the goddess Hylia, I offer this trial. 
A modest test of strength, the Sasakai Shrine. I would heal before we go into this, but I want to see if we could do this on three hearts, because that'd be pretty cool if we could. This isn't a difficult boss or anything like that, but I'm just very curious if we can actually do this. I don't want to use the Great Flame Blade, because it's still going to be useful for us when we get out of this place. Alright. Flurry Rush. Butt mash, butt mash, butt mash! We probably use a stronger weapon than this. What else do we have? Uh, let's, use, let's use this thing. If we're in the Grudel region after all, so it might be a good idea to have a Grudel equipment and things like that. So, we can take care of this. You're going to be doing your spinning attack now. Come on, come on, come on. Bring it on! Flurry Rush. Okay, so I feel unnecessarily happy doing the Flurry Rush every time, but uh, the thing about Twitter is that whenever you see clips of Breath of the Wild nowadays, it's usually these really cool things that people are able to do, and it's all like, I've been playing Breath of the Wild since launch, why can't I do that? Uh, there's this one particular clip, um, I probably can't show it on screen right now, um, but there's this one really cool clip where it shows um, Link fighting the Lionel on the path to, I think it's the path, the one they have to fight to. I think it's the one that's close to the arrows you need to get uh, to gain to Veruta. Yeah, that's one that's kind of interesting. Basically what they were doing was that they were able to just walk away slowly, but they were able to um, do the shield bashing attack every single time the Lionel was trying to attack. And it was really cool, and it's like, I know if I tried, I probably could pull off something like that, but then you have other ones where you have like a full equipment of boomerangs that you're throwing in a circle and you're continuously throwing them and you're able to beat the Lionel in like five seconds. Alright, do we have a good two-handed weapon? We may have thrown it out in the one shrine. Well, we have a great flame blade, so... I don't want to use that, but let's try it anyway. Okay, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. I want to do this with three hearts, I want to do this with three hearts, three hearts, three hearts, three hearts, three hearts, come on, come on, come on! I am so glad I didn't try spinning around again because I don't think I would have had enough time before it charged up again. But we did it with three hearts, so yay! Guardian Sword plus Guardian Spear plus. Uh, get out of here, stupid Guardian Sword. We have the plus version, which makes it better. <laughs> okay, dokey. With all that taken care of, please don't be a weapon that fills up the inventory. Please don't be a weapon that fills up the inventory. It's a weapon that fills up the inventory. Because something I don't know the answer to is if you open up a treasure chest, but it has a weapon like that that you can't carry in your inventory because it's full, does it still count? Because there's that little icon that appears on the shrine map after you finish a shrine on the overworld. So, does that icon still appear even if you don't actually take the weapon out of the treasure chest? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> With all that taken care of, Gurdo Town is not too far off now. It'll be much closer by the time the next video play starts because we'll be teleported over there. But anyway, so I'm taking care of all that. We're in this video off here. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Your options are ready to go next. You're in the next video to play this where we're going to return to Karakara Bazaar and a couple other places across Hyrule to continue building Terrytown. The alternate route, however, is to go into the Gerudo Town itself to continue the story. You can also search for the Koroks across the Gerudo region, or you can ignore all of that and go straight for Calamity Ganon. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I believe you're to you, and we're going to go to next.